Hey guys, this is uh, guitarist Dennis Tief. I'm in Bloomington, Indiana. It's a foul weather day. It's kind of cold, kind of rainy. Man, it's quiet as a mouse too. There's nobody around. And I guess it's Sunday too. And that may be part of it. And it's Mother's Day as well, so so it's real quiet. Now, I've been playing um, Parker guitars for a very, very long time. Um, and in particular, I think it's, it's a very stock model Parker P10. It's a mahogany body, mahogany neck, um, two humbucking pickups, and a three-way switch, and that's about it. It's pretty stripped down. Um, has a tunematic bridge, kind of like you would find on a Les Paul. So I've been playing those for years. And I go to this music store, Vance Music, in Bloomington, uh, very often, uh, try out amps and guitars, and, the, and there's always this one guitar that I always play there. I think it's the best sounding guitar that I'd heard in a very, very long time. Um, and don't get me wrong, they have, you know, tons of guitars there. Uh, from GNL, Fender, on and on and on and on. Now, this particular guitar is a Yamaha RS320. And, as it turns out, it's a 22 fret. Um, it's made out of um, something uh, that's equivalent to mahogany but found in Indonesia which is where it was built and it's called um, um, nano or something like that basically it's mahogany um, neck and body two pneumatic bridge right two humbucking pickups three-way switch Hmm, sounds very familiar, doesn't it? And a rosewood neck. And the Parker um, is very similar to this Yamaha. Mm. And it's red. And again, very similar to my Parkers, though my Parkers are, are red as well. But they're kind of a darker red. Um... So it's very curious, um, and it had the kind of neck that isn't a, a shredder's neck, you know, where you can, you know, where it's, the threads are super close together, and you know, you can have a, a stretch out your hand and you know do twelve foot or twelve fret stretches, you know. Um, it's almost like a flat neck, almost like a Les Paul. However, um, still has that Strat type feel. Um, and I've, I've used it over and over again. Um, and finally I thought about it and I looked at the price and um, the price I found brand new is three hundred and ninety nine dollars and if you think about it for an instrument that you're gonna keep for years and play for years that's really not very much money in fact you know and for me it's a lot of money don't get me wrong but speaking guitar wise um, you know, in fact, before I picked up that guitar, there was another guitar there, and it was uh, about three thousand dollars, and it was, um, 
hand made a guy had made a, a hollow body type guitar and so as you can see for me the, the way I always looked at guitars you had the the really beginner guitars and those were like you know 200 and under and then you had the $250 guitars which were kind of oh uh, okay but on their last legs type thing and then the three to five hundred dollar guitars are the real workhorses you know the everyday players guitar you know and then from there you move up to the five hundred to a thousand dollar range and those are the you know American Fender Stratocasters Les Pauls and things um, and from there it goes up, <laughs> you know, and the truth be told, once you start going up in price, you don't get much more, quite honestly, in my opinion, you know, um, so anyway, so I've been playing this, um, uh, playing this guitar, and, and I thought, man, it's really kind of nice. And, uh, well, when you think about it, it would be like, on the easy payment plan, it would be $128, and then three payments of $100. Uh, man, that's really not bad, you know. I have to include the sales taxes where the $28 comes from, but it comes with no case, though. What a rip. But that's okay. Um, so, guitar-wise, and you know, for me, uh, you know, I don't care if it's a, you know, $100 Yamaha Pacifica or a, you know, $6,000 Gibson Les Paul. It has to feel right and sound good, you know in your hands uh you know and i don't know get you know guitars uh, talk to you you know of course not literally <laughs> but they do they um you know you pick one up and you know that this is the guitar you know it feels right or it doesn't or this is a guitar for you or this isn't you know just like that edge always talks about it when he went to uh, Sam Sam Ash I think it is in New York or Manny's yeah Manny's and picked up that Gibson Explorer and it's been with him ever since you know wouldn't have been my first choice but I haven't played that guitar obviously so anyway so I knew that guitar is exactly what I wanted and what really drew me towards it is um just like the parker in fact um it resonates um you know there's no whammy bar it's super stripped down super simple um and resonates almost like an acoustic guitar you know and that always translates into a great guitar sound especially a clean guitar sound um, so I was quite familiar with it. So really it was a, kind of a no-brainer for me. It was, uh, and, and you know, I'm not a, a guitar collector by any means. You know, I, I have, well, I've got those Parkers and that's, that was about it. So, um, I knew I'd, I would regret, you know, if I let that Yamaha go. Um, it, and it's, the RS320 is the, uh, beginning of a series of guitar called, uh, Revstar Yamaha guitars, and they have different models, and the RS320 is, was basically, after I researched it, um, is the stripped down base model of the Revstar. Yamaha series, um, 
I wish I could remember what they called that wood. It, 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 it's mahogany, but only found in Indonesia, which is very kind of strange, you know. Uh, and but what I like about it is, you know, when you strum something, it's so clear, almost sounding like an acoustic. It's, it's very loud, unplugged. <laughs> which is always a good sign, and the feel is just great, the, the neck and things. But it's also no thrills, I mean, there's no no coil taps and, you know, fancy stuff at all. I mean, it's, it's pretty much as basic as you can get. What is interesting, it has ceramic pickups, right? Uh, I guess they give you kind of a mid-rangey, bright sound but it's still very warm it's a it's a warm sounding guitar in fact super warm yeah which is why i liked it so much but yeah as i recall they said it had ceramic pickups uh 22 frets but you can access all of them easily because that's that cutaway thing i think the only thing i dislike about it is the pick guard as you'll see Pick guard is kind of weird. It's like this little half pick guard, and it just kind of cuts off. <laughs> you know, I, I'm thinking of taking it off, to be quite honest. You know, uh, yeah, I don't. When I play, I don't remember needing a, a pick guard, really. Uh, you know, I don't thrash on the strings too much. Uh, We'll see. I don't. I don't know what's under the pig guard. If it's still that nice finish, I hope it is. That'd be awesome. We'll see about that. So anyway, I couldn't resist, and uh, um, so I brought it home. And you know, when you think out, I mean, hopefully, I'll be, you know. Still playing the same guitar ten years from now, so I'm hoping. You know, as I did the Parkers, I've, I've had those for gosh, ages now. You know, um, so and I'm definitely not, like I said, not a guitar collector. You know, um, there are people who collect guitars, have all kinds of different guitars for for different things and so on. Uh, I was never that way. I just um, one, I couldn't afford it. That's one thing. And two, it just didn't appeal to me, you know. It's, you know I hate to say it, but to me, a guitar is it's kind of like a tool that you use, you know. Um, so, in that respect, it's there. And it's funny because the Parkers were about the uh, about the same price range, so I guess that's just my price range as far as guitars go. You know, between three and five hundred, and, and hopefully closer to three. <laughs> you know, um, so in this case, you know, three ninety nine is perfect, and that's a you know for me that's a you know, semi-professional to professional guitar for sure. You know, I mean, you can absolutely play gigs with it and so on. Um, now, it's not vintage. It's not, you know, a pre-CBS Fender or what have you. And Eric Johnson, you know, model Stratocaster or what have you. Um... But it does the job. I think it does the job very well. And I think they're very um, under looked Yamaha guitars in general. But they're really fine guitars. Um, so let's take a look at it. Okay, now here it is. In its original box, it's a Yamaha. Right? made in indonesia it's the red copper 
RS320. Ooh, that's red. There it is. That's the guitar. There's a two pneumatic bridge, two humbuckers, and just tone and volume, a three-way switch there. Um, rosewood neck. Generic tuners, I mean, but they work fine. There's that little Yamaha logo. And here's a pickup or the scratch plate. See that? It's a pick guard. Isn't that kind of weird looking? I think it'd look much nicer without it. But maybe not. I don't know. Okay, anyway, you'll see how it's a really nice neck. Um, here's a real nice there it's a glued in neck right there with the two cutaways so you can get to it really easily kind of a strange shape i guess super nice though man just plays like a dream here it is and there's the rs20 so there it is um Right now it's got elixir strings on it that just came with it. There are actually tens on there right now. And I keep those. Um, you know, again, it's not a, for me, not a shred guitar at all, you know. And that's what Yamaha said. It's basically a stripped down rock guitar is what it, what it was supposed to be. And I can see why they would say that. And there's the tuners. And they're just... Uh, where are they? There they are. They're just kind of, you know, kind of generic -y. tuners. They're not locked down or anything, but it stays in tune great. Um, I'll have to put it through its paces, see how it compares to the to my Parkers. It's pretty heavy. Um, and here, uh, so has the plastic on everything. You know, I haven't taken that off at all. Yeah. Don't you think it would look better with a... Without the pick guard? Man, I think it would. I'm, I guess, I don't know, I don't like this right here. It's just kind of straight across, you know. Kind of strange. But I don't want to damage it either. In any case, and for me, this is the kind of guitar that'll last, hopefully, you know, 10 or more years, maybe 20 years, would be awesome. You know, those Parkers are heading that way. Uh, been playing them a long time. And I'll continue to play them, you know, it's just a, a change. Okay, now, while we're out here, um, one thing I always check with the guitar and to know if it's going to sound good or not is to hear it unplugged, right? So here it is. And see if you can hear that. And you can hear... So, if it gets a big sound like that, you know, it's almost like an acoustic. Not quite. Anyway, yeah, so if you get a really big sound uh, unplugged, then it's going to sound really good when it's plugged in, you know. Like, uh,
Yeah, that's a really big, big sound. You know, for electric, it's pretty heavy, I gotta say. That's the one thing, it's, it's kind of a heavy guitar. Um, but it sounds really good unplugged, so it should sound even better, you know, plugged into an amp and things. And yeah, new price on that, three ninety nine. Which for a guitar of this caliber, I think is a hard to believe, really. You know. Um, so we'll see about that. Now, might if you look at those pickups. One of them's real high, the other's real low. Might change that, adjust it a little bit. I'm not sure yet. Man, it's just sweet. Okay, now, take a look at this. This is quite interesting. On the right, you've got the Parker Mahogany guitar. I played for years. And on the left, you've got the Yamaha Revstar RS320. And uh, notice they're very, very similar. Right, going up here. Except there's quite a few differences. One of them that I did not realize, if you take a look at this neck, see how wide that is? Compare that to the to the Parker. Much smaller. Now the Parker's got more frets, I guess. But they're hard to get to. So about the same. However, the big difference, the huge difference, which I didn't realize, is that the Parker, width-wise, right here, about half the size. So this thing is huge, this Revstar, it's twice as thick, which I didn't realize, and twice as heavy, too. Now, I hope this doesn't cause me problems, because it's really heavy. You know, I'm used to the Parkers, which are real light. So this is a really heavy, heavy guitar. Wow, quite surprised. It's very much kind of like, I mean, the best way to describe it, which is what I used to describe the Parker, kind of a cross between a, um, a Gibson, you know, Les Paul and a Fender Strat. And this is very similar to that. But much heavier, more on the Les Paul side than the Strat side. Which is kind of like what the Parker is like. Uh, all I know is I definitely have to invest in a, a pretty decent strap. Guitar strap, you know, that goes around kind of holding the guitar. Uh, hopefully a padded one, if I can find one. That's decent. Hey guys, I've got it. I've got this guitar plugged into my uh fender deluxe reverb here and uh very first thing right off the bat um these are big strings these are tens and i'm used to playing nines um, but it fits the next perfectly and i'm um, just from messing around just playing it trying to do this video it's just a huge sound this is in the neck position Yeah, I try to make this video and every time I just start playing and we 
before you know it, you know, a whole half hour is gone. But I came up with some stuff. This is kind of neat. This is a uh, adding the ninth here, and I get this kind of. Uh,
find you know voicings, chord voicings. <laughs>
anyway, um...
But boy, I could play on that all day. And it's really, you know, you hit a chord and you go, ah, oh, that's what it's supposed to sound like. Man, I remember I used to play on real junky guitars. And they say, okay, well, here's the fingering for a certain chord. And I would do the fingering and play the chord and go, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like it at all. It's just because the chord, the, the guitar was so crappy. You know, so here you really don't have that. Um, definitely a big fan of this guitar and the Parkers as well, you know. The only thing is that, you know, the Parkers aren't made anymore, and they're really, you know, kind of hard to find, that particular model that I played. And, um, it was nice to, to change for a little bit, you know, so, uh, I think I'm definitely, you know, over time there'll be a guitar I use quite a bit, this Yamaha, uh, definitely. Uh, and I love that really big sound, you know. Um, yeah, highly recommended. Seriously, for the price, um, quite amazing. I didn't really appreciate the the red finish, this copper red finish, until I actually got it home. You know, I don't know why that is. Uh, even outside, I mean, yeah, you can see it was red, obviously. But I didn't appreciate the how nice of a finish it is, really, uh, until I got at home and, and in my studio room and started playing it. You know, it's a really a great guitar. Um, yeah, and the neck um, pickup is really great. You know, that real kind of hollowish type sound. But the bridge pickup is just as impressive you know it just adds a little high end but not too much you know on the Parkers man you put in the bridge position and it goes crazy you know loud difference wise here not so much it's much more balanced which I like a lot so if you thinking of a guitar this might be one that'd be worthwhile uh, definitely and in the future, I'll do a little update on it, see if I switched it to nines, maybe, or if I kept tens on it, you know. Tens give you that real big sound, um, you know, a little harder to play, I think. And um, I don't know, maybe not. We'll see. Alright, so anyway, there you go. There's my review of the Rev Star RS320. Uh, highly recommended. Um, brand new. They're like three ninety nine. dollars So you can imagine that if you find a used one, even it would be less than that. And definitely a, you know, semi pro to pro quality guitar. You know, there's a. Nothing cheap about it, you know, as far as the sound goes and the sound quality. You know, and the pickups are great.